now that we've finished our introduction into trigonometry, the back page is going to start looking at some applications for trigonometry. And one of the things that we refer to in some of the application problems are angles of elevation and angles of depression. So it's important that we understand what those are. And so let's just go ahead and define them. Hopefully you know the word elevate, elevation, is basically what is above you or looking up. And depression in general means something going down. So the angle of elevation is the angle between the horizontal line a horizontal line and the line of sight above the horizontal line. So the word above comes in there, above the horizontal line. So if we look at the diagram above here, we have this ship and we have this airplane, and so the Horizontal line would be the line straight out from you if you're on the ship and you're looking up. And then the line of sight would be the direct line in between the two objects. And the angle of elevation would then be the angle between the two, so looking up through that angle. And that would be called the angle of elevation. The second angle in the diagram is called the angle of depression. And you guys know that word generally means something going down, so it's the same type of idea here, it's the angle of depression is the angle between the horizontal line and the line of sight below the horizontal line. Okay, so up in the diagram, if you're looking at an angle of depression, you're looking down at something. So it'd be like on the airplane right here. And if you draw a line straight out from you on the airplane, and then you draw your line of sight, if you're looking at the ship down here, then the angle of depression would be that angle between those two lines. Now what you should notice between the angle of elevation and the angle of depression is that in the diagram they are both 30 degrees. And in fact, this is always going to be true, not that they're 30 degrees, but that they are going to be congruent to each other. Because if you think back to the beginning of this year, this looks an awful lot like our parallel line property, and basically these are alternate interior angles. So that is an important point up here that you might want to write down as well. So the angles of elevation and depression are congruent. Now, obviously, we'd be having to look at the same objects here. So we're referring to the ship and the airplane. So the angle of elevation between those two and the angle of depression between those two would be congruent to each other. That's always going to be true. All right, so let's go ahead and look at an example here. Example number four said the airplane is headed for the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport, 12.5 ground miles away. If the airport is at the altitude of three miles, what is the angle of depression from the airplane to the airport? All right, so let's think about the airplane over here. And I am not that great of an artist, so I'm just going to do my best. So here's the wings, here's the tail, here's my airplane. And it is flying towards an airport. The airport, of course, is on the ground. So let me make the ground below the airplane. So here's the ground. And then let's put the airport maybe over here. I'm just going to put the words airport rather than trying to draw an airport. I'm not sure what an airport looks like in a drawing like this. All right. So now let's think about the line of sight between the two. So here is the line of sight between the airplane and the airport, because that's important. And in the example, let's start putting in the information now. It says that the airport is 12.5 ground miles away from the airplane. So when we say ground miles, that's going to mean that we're going to have to think about a line dropping straight down from the airplane all right, to the ground. And as I get in front of that, that looks a little bit diagonal. So I'm going to try that one more time. In fact, I am going to use a tool so I can get this done well here. So here is my line right here. OK. So now I know that this right here is 12.5 miles. All right. 
right now, it says that the airplane is at an altitude of three miles. Well, you've heard that word altitude before. We've used it in geometry. You hear it a lot if you're riding on an airplane because it means how high above the ground you are, straight down to the ground. So this line right here would represent the altitude. So our three miles is right here. All right. What is the angle of depression from the airplane to the airport? All right. So if you're thinking about the angle of depression being right here, that would be wrong. Okay. Do not make that mistake. That's a very common mistake to put the angle of depression right there. But look up at the diagram above. Our angle of depression, remember, is an angle measured from a horizontal line straight out from you. So draw a line straight out. And the line of sight. All right, so here's the line of sight. So this is the angle of depression right here. That's what we're interested in in this problem. That angle of depression right there. Now what we know about that angle, though, since we have the numbers kind of on this triangle down here, is that angle of depression is going to be the same as the angle of elevation down here at the bottom. Angle of depression and angle of elevation are kind of alternate interior angles, so I can actually go ahead and use this bottom triangle right here and sort of use the angle of elevation to figure this out, and then I know it's the same as the angle of depression for my answer. So now let's think about which ratio we're going to use now that we've set this all up. So if this is the angle we're referring to down here, the three miles is directly across from that angle. So that's going to be our opposite side. And then the 12.5 miles is not the hypotenuse, so that means that it's the other side. It's the adjacent side. So what ratio uses opposite and adjacent? You got it. Tangent does. TOA, ta tangent is opposite over adjacent, so let's set that up. So the tangent of our angle, which we don't know, the tangent, though, is equal to opposite over adjacent, so make sure you do the opposite in the numerator, so that's the 3, and the adjacent in the denominator, that's the 12.5. So remember what we just talked about, instead of referencing the table on our worksheet, we're going to use our calculator now, and when we use our calculator, we are going to be looking at the inverse tangent. Remember, you use the inverse tangent to work backwards to get the angle. So you're basically asking the calculator, what angle has a tangent of 3 divided by 12.5? So you type that into your calculator as the inverse tangent of 3 over 12.5. If you have a graphing calculator, this is exactly what you would do. You'd do second tangent to get that little tan to the negative 1, and then in the parentheses, 3 divided by 12.5. And if you do that, you should get 13.5 degrees. Now, if I'm going to do that with my little calculator on the screen here, I'm going to actually do the ratio first. So I'm going to take 3 divided by 12.5 and get that ratio. And then I'm going to do the inverse tangent. So second tangent, and there's my 13.5. So with this calculator on the screen here, I have to do my steps in slightly different order than the graphing calculator. But in the end, hopefully you are also getting 13.5 degrees. So even though that was the angle of elevation that I just figured out, it is the same as the angle of depression. So 13.5 degrees would be our answer for the angle of depression. Okay, so steps three and four together. All right, one more problem. A man is swimming in a lake and looks up to see a bald eagle at the top of a tree growing on the shore. The distance between the man and the shore is 25 feet, and there is a 62 degree angle of elevation to the top of the tree. How tall is the tree? All right, so let's just draw a little diagram here. So we've got some water, and then we've got the shoreline over here. All right, so there's the shoreline, and maybe a tree is growing up on the shoreline, and something like this. And since it's a tree, we're going to kind of make it green right here. And I'm not going to even attempt to draw a bird, but a bird sitting up at the top of the tree here, a bald eagle, in fact. And the guy over here is swimming, so there's this dude over here. He's swimming in the water, and it says, holy cow, look up at up the top of the tree. There's a bald eagle. So he's looking up at the tree. Pretend that's a perfectly straight line. Okay? Don't make fun of me. All right, so there's the bald eagle up at the top of the tree. That's kind of fun. Bald eagles are cool. So he looks up there and sees that, and he knows that the distance between himself and the shoreline is 25 feet. All right, 25 feet. And there is a 62-degree angle of elevation. He just happens to know that 
the 62 degree angle of elevation. He's really good with angles, so he knows that. And then, how tall is the tree? So we're looking at this side over here. All right, so now let's think about which ratio we are going to use. 62 degree angle. And then think about this directly across from it is the opposite side. And then down here we have the adjacent side. His line of sight is the hypotenuse, but we're not using that, so opposite and adjacent. Just like the last problem, that means that we are using tangent. TOA is the acronym. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the tan of 62 degrees is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. So x divided by 25. And now let's go ahead and solve that. So solving for x, I'm going to multiply both sides by 25 to do the algebra here to cancel that out. So now I have x is equal to 25 times the tangent of 62. Notice I'm keeping this exact now. Instead of going and getting a decimal for a tangent of 62 and putting that in there, I'm doing this all sort of in one step, keeping it nice and clean. So now, punch into your calculator, 25 times the tangent of 62, and you should get 47 for your answer, 47 feet. So our answer should be 47 feet. That's how tall the tree is. Let's just double check that on our calculator on the screen here. So I did 25 times tan 62, so I'm actually going to do the uh, 62 first. So 62, I'm going to take, oops, I'm still in that mode, so 62, I want to take the tangent of that, so there's the tan 62, um, and multiply that times 25, so times 25, and there I have my approximately equal to 47 feet. So as we start doing the problems today, we're going to do more application problems. It requires you to read, to make a good diagram. Uh, you can make it as creative as you want. In the end, the math, though, is going to be the same thing as what we were just doing yesterday in class. So if you can set up the diagram correctly, I think you're going to be just fine on the math part.